Hola y bienvenidos a todos. Hola, me llamo John de Marco Learning y aquí vamos a practicar este examen de AP Spanish Literature. Me encanta la, la literatura española porque yo he estudiado la historia de la época medieval que ya conocen ustedes. Lo que quiero hacer es... Mira, ok, estamos aquí en vivo en YouTube. I need to just mute this page. Give me one second. And hold on one second for me. Ok, um, vamos ahora a compartir esta página de AP Spanish Literature. And let me know in the chat that you guys can hear me okay, that we're, our audio is all set. Um, I just want to make sure okay. that, and you know what, I'm hearing it still. I've just got to close okay. this out. Um, vamos ahora a compartir esta página okay. de AP Spanish Literature. And let me know in the chat. And I think we're good. So the page that I'm going to here, I know that it's coming in through the background for just a second. I just want to make sure. Hold on. That, and you know what, I'm hearing it still. I just got to close this out. Okay. Esto sería mejor. Me llamo John de Marco Learning. Déjame saber en, in the chat what you, you know, are doing in AP Spanish literature. Are you a student? Are you a teacher? How can we help you out? Um, because it is uh, just a few days away from the AP Spanish literature exam. And <clears throat> what I'm going to do is track this chat as we go through our session. And I'm going to share my screen for information regarding the AP Spanish literature exam. We're going to spend some time going through one of this pa the past year's exam. So here, I'm sharing my, my screen, and this website is really amazing. It's a great place for you um, to spend time because it's completely free. It's from the College Board, and it contains all of the past exams that you've ever done, so um, or that, that have been administered in recent years. So what I would like to do is I'm going to take you all to the 2016 exam. And this is just one that you may not have done, and um, it's going to give us a chance to look at each of these questions of the free response section in turn. So I'm gonna zoom in nice and big here. Couple of tips for AP Spanish literature, of course, is that the exam is one hour and 40 minutes long with four questions, the free response part. And these instructions are basically always the same. In 2016, here, I'll just show you real quick what the 2021 looked uh, like. The 2021 exam had one hour and 40 minutes four questions, the same basic setup. So we're looking at the 2016 one. And the first task you're gonna have is a 15 minute long essay. Now this is significant because 15 minutes is 15 minutes, not a 45 minute essay, not where you, what you're used to necessarily from your other AP classes. So as we're going through this, you wanna keep that in mind, but everything that you're being asked to achieve is in such a short period of time. So. I'm going to read this prompt and we're going to break down what they want you to do. And then we can actually look, this is amazing. We can look at student samples and scoring. So let me know in the chat if you've already done this example before. Um, but we know that esta viene de Nuestra América and it tells me identifica el autor y la época de este fragmento. Luego explica el temo, tema de la identidad americana dentro de la obra a la que pertenece. So identify the author and the time period from which this fragment comes. So identify the, the author and time period of the fragment uh, excerpt. Then explain the theme of American identity in the work uh, to which it pertains. So we have Nuestra America. We know that uh, it just comes from this publishing house. And then we only have six lines. You have to identify who wrote this, what is the time period, and what about the American theme? Don't think, oh, I need to write a three-page essay. This is, you're keeping this super short. So this is super short. I'll read it out loud. It goes, Conocer el país y gobernarlo conforme al conocimiento es el único modo de librarlo de tiranías. La Universidad Europea ha de ceder a la Universidad Americana. La historia de América, de los Incas a acá, 
ha de enseñarse a dedillo, aunque no se enseña la de los arc arcontes de Grecia. Nuestra Grecia es preferible a la Grecia que no es nuestra. No es más necesaria. Los políticos nacionales han de reemplazar a los políticos exóticos. Injértese en nuestras repúblicas el mundo, pero el tronco ha de ser el, el de nuestras repúblicas. Y calle el pedante vencido, que no hay patria en que pueda tener el hombre más orgullo que en nuestras dolorosas repúblicas americanas. So here we go. This is the text. Do you need to know every word of it? Do you need to read it out loud on YouTube live? No, it's a much shorter text. Who wrote Nuestra América? Where is this text from? Let me know in the chat. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and reshape this in my screen so that you can all see it more clearly. And hopefully that's a little bit more visible, but go to the chat here live in YouTube and let me know, because I got some people here, let me know who wrote this text. So identify the author, it's just a name, the time period, when was Nuestra America written? And then we could talk about how you explain that theme of identity. So there's a little bit of lag here on YouTube, but you can go ahead and do that. Again, this channel, we've got videos for AP Spanish language and literature and more than a dozen other AP subjects. So if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that. It's a great way to get access to these videos and reminders of the next time we go live. And Estefani, you're saying Jose Martí. Muy bien. Jose Martí es el autor de Nuestra América. Um, and so getting that right is really important. Y cuando escribió Jose Martí esta, este fragmento de Nuestra América, what would you say for the time period, la época de este fragmento? So that's sort of like one part, Jose Martí. That's the easy one. If you know Nuestra América, you should. The time part is the second one. And then we need to explicar. So explicar is más de, de un, unas frases o un para, párrafo pequeño, pero una explicación formal dentro del contexto de 15 minutos, una explicación de este tema de, de la identidad americana. So we got to explain this theme of American identity We got to do more than just name Jose Martí and when he wrote about 100-ish years ago. Um, we need to explain the theme of American identity. So take a minute and look, let's look in this passage for clear examples of American identity. So let's see. Do, do, do. I get a general line here in the front and I'm just kind of doing this in English. Um, the first reference to America explicitly is here about how the European university gives way to the American university, okay? The history of America, of the Inca, um, but not Greece. Our Greece is preferable to the Greece that is not our own. Nothing, nothing else is necessary. National politics will replace or will de-emphasize the exotic politics or foreign politics. Okay, so there's plenty to work with here. One thing I want you guys to keep in mind is this. The AP Spanish literature exam is set up for you to succeed. This is not a difficult question in terms of identifying the author. They published the list of books they want you to know. It is not a difficult exam in terms of like, is there actual evidence here of the Amer of identi uh, American identity? Sure. Chill, it's going to be fine. You have plenty to work with. Let's take a look at what students did. Um, and here I'm back here in the 2016 ones. So one of the nice things, again, about this page, which I've linked to in the chat, is I can take a look at sample responses from students. If you've never seen this, this is really, really effective way to study. Aquí tenemos una respuesta. En 15 minutos, este estudiante ha escrito una página Página y cuarto. Um, este ejemplo, solo una página y la tercera, un párrafo. Y aquí tenemos the scores and commentaries. We have the first one, um, sample 1A has got a 3-3, so 3 out of 3 for both language and content. Remember, that's how you're being graded. And if you're like, I don't know how I'm being graded. Why did you skip that part? I'm going to scroll up. It gives you the scoring guidelines that were used by the readers who were actually reading the exams. Every essay you write, of course, will be graded by real people. It will be written by hand. It will be written in ink. 
remember multiple choice in pencil uh, uh, and every free response question in boligrafo, de azul o negro, don't use erasable pens, just cross through whenever you make a mistake and make it clear because we know that this year's exam, the 2022 exam and future exams, many of them are being graded by as a digital scan of your writing on a computer screen. So even if the readers are getting together in person, they're gonna be reading digital scans, not the hard copies. And that matters because if your handwriting is like this, oh, we know what's happening. If your handwriting is a hot mess, no sabemos nada, right? We're gonna get confused and the readers are gonna be, be struggling here. So let's just see how quickly this person is sort of earning points, so to speak. Okay. The fragment represented, the, uh, the selected fragment corresponds to the work of Our America, written by Jose Marti during the 19th century. In the argument uh, of Jose Marti, uh, the theme of American identity is developed throughout the text. Marti, Marti trata de resaltar la prioridad que se debería dar a conocer la historia del lugar. So we got the name and we got the date, and then we got the, hey, the American stuff is being, the theme of American identity is being developed throughout the text, which is just fantastic. So this person is just already laid out the foundation, like you're giving me a lot of points, but let's see if the person can get specific, move away from like, la identidad es muy importante a través del fragmento. That is not gonna be enough to give the reader a, a clue that you really understand Remember how, what it said here, where was this? Let me get rid of this guy here. This is the 21. Um, okay. Explica el tema de la identidad americana dentro de la obra a la que pertenece. So you need to know something about the theme of American identity in this fragmento, and you'll need to know something about it in the work at large. Okay, so here we are. Blah, 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 blah. Trata de importancia. Ba, 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 hasta de Martí demuestra su orgullo por su propia identidad americana y extendi, extiende este sentimiento para out, argumentar que al conocer la historia de América o del país propio y de la misma cultura, los habitantes de aquel lugar también lo, lograrían desarrollar un orgullo por su propia identidad americana. The grammar on that is not perfect. And one thing that the College Board has done as they've selected this and built this out on the AP Central website, not AP Classroom, AP Central and totally free for everyone. When they built this out, they selected examples that weren't quite perfect, right? This is not a PhD uh, level argument about what's going on inside of 19th century literature. This is a, a student who's working under strict time constraints to get as many points as possible, which is what you're going to do. Here, the student develops it, it some more, um, explaining, notice that there's few quotes. There's this one right here, la historia de América de los Incas acá ha de enseñarse al dedillo, aunque no se enseñe la de los arcontes de Grecia. Nuestra Grecia es preferible a la Grecia que no es nuestra. No es más necesaria. Um, so here, that's sort of a longer quote, probably longer than the student needed. But notice when I was reading through with you, I grabbed onto those specific points as well. I'm looking for a specific thing to highlight. Um, and right here, en su cita, no solo resalta la importancia de conocer la historia e identidad propia, sino que también argumenta que no es más necesaria y podría de ser de más importancia conocer. There's a lot of summary going on here. Who cares? 15 minute response. It's analyzing enough, it's explicando, no analizando, explicando eh, este tema dentro del contexto del, del fragmento y de la obra. Y aquí tenemos. La información de los graders. Aquí. This is how this scored. This response correctly got Jose Martí, correctly got Siglo XIX, and effectively explained the themes and gave a lots of quotes of this and supports the response with relevant evidence from the text. And there we go. So the person gets the content score. It's not a, a, an overly complicated thing. For those of you just joining, me llamo John de Marco Learning. Aquí estamos estudiando la historia, no, la literatura española para este examen de AP Spanish Literature. Say hello in the chat. Ask your questions there. Um, it's live and open for you. And also, if you like this video, press that like button.
Here's the language. The response demonstrates language usage that's appropriate to the task, generally accurate and varied. Corresponde, blah, blah, blah. That it's very good. In spite of an error in agreement, la historia e identidad propia, dos cosas propias. And the use of the feminine adjective es más necesaria. Uh, word order information are generally accurate despite some awkward phrasing. They'll let you get away with your Spanglish kind of phrases and the awkwardness that, that's inherent in all of this. Um, although there are errors in accents, de donde, este, aquel, también, sin acento, and a missing comma, the reader's understanding is not impeded. It's when you do this, I'm going to show you the one here. So this got, actually, let's see what this got in terms of score. One, one. They were not happy with anything on this. Y mira este, en total. Seis líneas. Nuestra América fue hecha por el modernismo. Es modernismo. So not the theme of identidad americana, not José Martí, and not siglo XIX. None of those specificities are there. It's just gone. So Nuestra América fue hecha por el modernismo. Es modernismo porque ya está en la época más cercana a la que está en la identidad de América se pone en efecto cuando ellos reemplacan las ideas políticas de antes y ya son... Okay. Yeah, what is this? this? There's really not much here. Pro tip for every AP exam that you are taking, get specific, cite the text really short and short little clips um, and get your point across uh, with some, some depth and specificity. Of course, this student might've just said like, hey, I'm stuck, what do I do? Now, one thing I wanted to point out to you too is I'm just gonna Google something real quick. This is AP Spanish literature. I'm actually gonna do CED. CED stands for course and exam description. And if you haven't ever spent any time in here, maybe don't, this is really meant for teachers, but it's a really good document if you need to get a sense of like what actually is covered in this course. So, por ejemplo, Carlin, you said, can we go over the historical context of modernismo y vanguardismo? So here's what's great is we get, um, the official curriculum guide that breaks down what you're supposed to know and not know about a certain time period. So we get the texts, for example, there's San Manuel Bueno, Martir, de Miguel de Unamuno. And I know that the themes that the college board wants to, that associates with this work, de Unamuno, the comparative works, you should be thinking of Niebla, de Unamuno, y Borges y yo, where Borges encounters himself on a, on a bench, or in literary terms. Here, you're saying, I feel like I don't have the vocabulary for this. I don't know what to say about, por ejemplo, este, esta obra de Unamuno. No, tenemos flashback, ambiguidad, personaje, narrador, fidedigno o no fidedigno, símil, metáfora, símbolo, punto de vista, trama, desdoblamiento, metaficción y juxtaposición. So all these terms um, are kind of a starting point as you're studying the works. Now, you'll, you'll see there's not much more besides this, except a couple other things I want to show you. So the, there's a dynamic um, table of contents inside of this. And actually, you know what I'll do? I'll save you all some trouble and pop this in the chat. So this is what I'm going to call CED. Um, and let me just real quick. Um, okay. So that is available for you all. And then what's nice about this dynamic thing is we can also look at, um, let me just see, I think it's here. So there's all this like education stuff you wanna skip, like all these charts and whatever. Here, by the way, is the list of all the required texts. If you were ever not sure, if you didn't have it in one place, pages 17 and 18 took me there. We have all the themes. You're like, what themes? I feel like I haven't done this. And let me know in the chat if you have covered these themes in depth, right? But they are societies in contact, the construction of gender, time and space, interpersonal relations, the duality of being or of the self, and literary creation. And so you're wondering, okay, what, you know, what exactly would they care about with literary creation? Which works? Aquí tenemos Don Juan Manuel con de Lucanor. Eh, Lázaro de Tormes, Borges y yo, Cervantes de Don Quijote. Por ejemplo, at the beginning of part two of Don Quijote, um, he, 
um, the, our main character encounters the first volume of Don Quixote several years after its actual publication inside the novel. There's all this play within a play sort of stuff at a Shakespearean level that's really exquisite um, in Don Quixote. Um, there are also literary terms, which I love this page. This, by the way, is page 23. Let's stop here for a minute. This is another great way to learn this content. Is so from basic on the left to advanced on the right. So if I talk about, for example, narrativa, al principio puedo hablar de autor, narrador, cuento, novela, prosa. Cognates, easy, whatever. In the middle, I get crónica, flashback, fluir de conciencia, narrador omnisciente, narrador limitado o narrativa en primera persona, prefiguración, punto de vista o perspectiva. So I get a more sophisticated thing, also filled with cognates, right? Chronicles, flashbacks, flow, streams of consciousness, an omniscient narrator, a limited narrator or a narrator of the first person, prefigurations, um, how do you translate that in English? Uh, foreshadowing, uh, punto de vista, which is point of view, and perspectiva. Pero aquí tenemos narrativa epistolar, de epistolas of letters. Narrador fidedigno, narrador no fidedigno. So these are people, trustworthy narrators and untrustworthy, unstable narrators. Narrators who are eyewitnesses, narration and parables. So this is a way of, for you in a very short period of time of upping your game, so to speak, on AP Spanish literature about what you can um, achieve on the test. So these are some ways to ground what you're doing in the requirements of the exam. And this goes on um, throughout. And then you'll see the, the kind of the overall view of the course. This is another thing, huge mistake AP Spanish literature students make, students making all the courses, is not paying attention to what's important and not. So relative to other things. So for example, la época medieval que me encanta porque yo he estudiado en la universidad, la época medieval, la historia social, y la literatura, pero it's only seven to eight of the class periods that are here, and it's only con, it's only con de Lucanor en este uh, de anónimo romance de la pérdida de, de la lama. So we have a very short thing where we're looking at, at that medieval context of the three religions, of judíos, cristianos, y musulmanes. We have these two texts. Este ejemplo um, moraleja, de, de, de moraleja, the moralistic literature that is meant to instruct people in good character, how to be a good person, a good Christian, rather than what we think about in later literature, which is more focused on the other themes of the course. You see, though, that by the time we get to the 16th century, it's more than double in importance, this unit. And this continues through the next few things. So this is, again, a useful way for you to spend time comparing, wow, siglo XVII, tenemos a lot of class periods are supposed to be focused on this. And here we have Góngora, Quevedo, Sor Juana, Inés de la Cruz, Miguel de Cervantes, y Tirso de Molina. A little bit less time here on these characters. And then it finishes out in much shorter um, things. And this, this stuff de Tomás Rivera, Rosa Montero, y Sabina Ulibarri are just less important um, by the time we've kind of finished the curriculum. Okay, so that being said, I, I want to just zoom back out to where we are. We're in the 2016 AP Spanish Literature FRQs. We looked at this text explanation question one. I want to quickly look at question two. It's a text and art comparison. It says, read the following selection and study the painting, then compare the representation of feminine beauty in the two works in relationship to the Baroque period. So I get este soneto de Góngora. Góngora, when I was a Spanish literature major at NYU, this was like some of the scariest stuff that I did. I actually preferred the medieval stuff. I felt like it was simpler. This stuff was, was really intense um, and very Latinate in its construction. So we would get this this view of feminine beauty inside the context of a very tightly structured sonnet from our boy Góngora. Um, and then we're going to get a painting. So here, and the paintings aren't necessarily Spanish um, on the exam, but this one is. So we have La Infanta Isabel Clara Eugenia de Alonso Sánchez Coello from New York. Se pintó en 1579. 
So let's talk about this image for a minute. Remember, you can write all over the test booklet. So you've got that pen, you're scribble scrabbling all through the book, escribiendo lo que quieres. And as you're doing this, you want to look for very flat kind of observational things. As you write your notes, write them in Spanish rather than in English. But as we write notes out for this, we would just describe, okay, this is, ella es una infanta, un, de, viene de, de la familia real. Ella tiene collar de perlas, um, diamantes, o oh, qué más, que te, una, esta cinturón, um, vestido de, ¿cómo podemos escribirla? Um, I would be looking for these vocabulary words of like, how do I describe this chunky kind of clothing? Um, the anillos, um, the, the, even the pose and the, and the formal posture, right? Feminine beauty here is presented um, in the adornments of wealth, in pearls and precious gems, in modesty, right? We actually see of her whole presentation of her body, literally just her face and her hands. Um, and of course, in the context of the medieval and early modern worlds, the veiling of women, even in Christian and Jewish societies was pretty common. So the royal family wasn't veiling and that she wouldn't have worn a veil, but she practically is. She's also, while there is an emphasis on her shape, she's got wearing a corset that that um, structures her, her body. Um, there's this sort of barrier between uh, sort of how beautiful she may be and the viewers look at her. Now, of course, she's also young, so they're presenting her as a wealthy, young aristocrat, modestly dressed, yet with extravagant jewels and, and other uh, things. So that's a representation of female beauty of a particular type. Let's see in Gongora, we get, Mientras por competir con tu cabello, oro bruñido al sol relumbra en vano. Mientras con menosprecio en miedo el llano, Mira tu blanca frente, el lilio bello. So we're getting this sort of paleness as part of, um, uh, of the representation of beauty. Mientras a cada labio por cogello sigue más ojos que al clavel temprano y mientras triunfa con desdén lozano, de luciente cristal tu gentil cuello, goza cuello, cabello, labio y frente, Antes que, so we've got our, you know, what matters to this poet in terms of the representation of female beauty. And remember, this is theme two about the construction of gender and, and the portrayal of women. Antes que lo que fue en tu edad dorada, oro, lilio, clavel, cristal, luciente. And there's this really interesting pattern, right? Cristal, clavel, lilio, this, these, the representation here, or the repetition rather, of oro these adjectives, no solo en plata o viola troncada, se vuelva más tú y ello juntamente, en tierra, en humo, en polvo, en sombra, en nada. So these little clusters of words that stack up at the end of each of these stanzas are commentaries that you can make. But remember, you, don't, you only have 15 minutes. So Read this inside of the painting, then compare the representation of beauty. So you'd want to say, now remember, comparison does not necessarily mean difference. You could talk about entirely about what you think is the same. So we can take a look at the sample here for question two and how this student, the first student here was able to earn points. This person only wrote, or actually wrote about a page and a half, which is very impressive. And this, this person wrote one tiny little paragraph. And those are, Wait, am I reading three different responses? Oh, sorry, these are three different writers. And so this one wrote just under a page. Um, ah, no, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Sorry, I get to this one. So here we have, okay. So the first one did write a page and a half. Um, the second one wrote uh, a page and a little bit over. And the third one wrote just a paragraph. They're really punishing the superficial responses that are only a couple of sentences long. So again, 15 minutes, what can you accomplish? The winning responses are specific and rich, and they are of approximately this length. So let's take a look at the, the sort of winning response, somebody who got full credit. Tanto el soneto, CLXVI, como la pintura 
ilustran la belleza femenina durante el periodo barroco. Oh, that's right. I totally forgot because I wasn't really reading the prompt carefully enough. I can't just compare the two. I need to relacionarlas al barroco. And this is incredibly important. I think people lose sight of this. If you don't read a prompt on an AP exam more than once, you can end up in trouble. I, I actually read it twice. Probably need to read it even more times. So this person is jamming into the front of the essay, a very clear presentation. I know that I'm going to be comparing these two works, and I know we're going to be talking about the Baroque period. So there's confidence that the person is doing a really good job. So durante ese periodo su, uh, que sucedió después del Renacimiento, se enfatiz enfatizaban el concepto del humanismo. Se puede ver la influencia de este concepto en la estilística something de la pintura y las descripciones del poema. Again, notice the person wrote in pen and scribbled a couple of times through the things that, that they didn't need, um, didn't matter. The person's handwriting is an, is an amazing, but it's definitely legible. Sin embargo, las dos obras presentan la belleza de la mujer desde distintas perspectivas. That's a great transition as you're looking for ways to quickly improve in AP Spanish literature. I did mention the vocabulary lists that were inside the CED. Um, in fact, I'm just going to come back and plug this again. This list, which is on page 23 of the CED, uh, and that is something that I've linked to in the chat for you all, um, is a great way to fuel the work that you do. So are these kind of prepackaged sentences. Como, sin embargo, las dos obras presentan la belleza de la mujer desde distintas perspectivas. So they're presenting the theme of the beauty of women from different points of view. Mientras las dos dan detalles sobre la belleza femenina, el poema a través del usar frases como oro bruñido al sol relumbra en vano para describir sin cabe su cabello y la pintora a través de la imagen de una mujer con la cara blanca vestido de ropa elegante solo el poema solo el poema trata del tema de el tiempo y, es y espacio so this person is waving around actually the formal themes from the course this person is actually grabbing stuff from um this this is what he did uh, or she did to talk about um, this and interpret this was to actually take one of the formal themes of the course you don't need to know them all but there's only six tiempo y espacio and to, and to identify it explicitly in um, this uh, passage in here aquí tenemos Góngora sin uh, the soneto so you know I, that was not in the prompt espacio y tiempo como tema pero aquí tenemos tenemos tiempo y espacio y espacio. Además de describir la belleza, en su poema Góngora nos presenta el subtema de Carpe Diem y dice a la mujer que goce de su belleza antes de que se desaparezca. Según Góngora, la belleza no es para siempre, sino rápido y efémera. Eh, eventualmente la, la bella mujer se convertirá en eh, entre comillas, en tierra, el humo, en polvo, en, en tierra, en humo, en polvo, en sombra, en nada. The nothingness of what is coming for beauty that is fleeting and passing away. Those are very classic themes of classic literature. They're biblical themes. And Gongora carry that heavy Latinity of, um, the, of classical education into his poetry. And it, la, it finishes with, por supuesto, la pintura no puede representar el efecto del tiempo y espacio en la misma manera que el poema. It can't tell me about time and space and the progression of time because it's a painting. This is, these are nice, nuanced ideas expressed nice and cleanly in Spanish. Of course, this is going to get all this credit. De hecho, se puede interpretar la pintura como un instante congelado del poema Oh, that's really interesting. Connecting the text in multiple ways. Donde la belleza de la mujer no desaparece y la mujer no envejezca. Jefe, envejera. A little bit clunky reading it. Um, 
So um, there's a good question coming in here in the chat about how many times do you connect back to the movement? I think this essay could have maybe brought El Barroco back more specifically. It could have done a thicker description of the painting, could have done all these things. It didn't need you to get the points it needed to get the points it needed, right? And so that's a really important thing to keep in mind is do what you have to do to get points. It's kind of a brutal perspective. Um, and as a teacher, I'd rather you like love Spanish literature and major in it like I did, or <laughs> like write for the beauty of it as it is, you've got an exam coming up and you wanna make sure that your performance on this exam scoops up all the points you can. That's all I can help you with this at this point because you're not gonna perfect your Spanish. You can't read all the books. You can read about the books. You can study the lists, you know, and which I, but I recommend, by the way, taking, for example, there's a few texts you're particularly weak with, or you take something like Borges y Yo, which is so short, um, and really kind of study it closely and build that confidence. Um, all that's great, but you really want to be thinking about how you're gaining and losing points. So the scoring guidelines are going to say exactly what we expect, right? Um, which is this response compares the theme and the artwork, the Baroque era, connects the two goes on to compare them explicitly, takes the theme of text uh, by taking the position, then highlighting aspects of the period, does get specific the, in this, después de renacimiento se enfatizaban el concepto del humanisto, and finally by tying aspects of the poem back to this. This is sort of over the top. Here the language, it's clear, generally accurate, varied, and as always, they're gonna show these different um, things, um, yeah, I'm just looking at these, these errors. Enfantizaban ephemera. Yeah, and that's why I was a little confused at the end here. Couple, couple little spelling errors. Did it, did it break the essay? Obviously not. So I'm gonna keep going. I'm flying because I do wanna get through as much of this FRQ, um, this 2016 FRQ and, and, it, and the effort of kind of getting you set up. Let's take a look at this one. Um, this is now 35 minutes on the exams, you wanna make sure you're allocating your time very well. The proctor in the script, um, you know, the, the proctor in the script is going to be uh, queuing you along generally on your AP English language, AP English literature, AP Spanish literature, but you are the CEO of your own time frame. So make sure that you're taking advantage of that to help you. Um, so this is a question Javi's asking about which obras are most likely in the ensayos. The truth is they can draw from all of them. I just was telling you all a minute ago that the Romance de la Perdida del Alama is not as important because it comes from la, la época medieval, pero aquí tenemos aquí en, en la tercera pregunta this thing. So, so it's all really fair game. I think the question at the last minute here, which is what we are in, is which of these texts are you unprepared for? It goes on for two pages inside the CED that I linked to before. And which can you get a quick summary of, review your notes um, and get through? Um, because uh, for example, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, I've always found manageable to read, but they're longer than some of the poems. Um, La Casa de Bernarda Alba, you're definitely gonna wanna read about rather than read the entire thing. And I say read about, read the plot summaries, read through notes that get around the, the specific details. So aquí tenemos, Algo de la Media. I'm not going to read the whole thing out loud. It comes from this, the 15th century. But let's take a look at this prompt real quick. Analyze how the Romance represents the characteristics of Romance and the historical context of Spain in the 15th century. In your essay, you should comment um, on the literary resources or tools of romance. And you should include examples from the text that support your ideas. So always specific examples. No te preocupes de these versos, or the line numbers. Um, a lot of people are like, I gotta get my quotes perfect. They have the text in front of them. The reader doesn't need that. And the reader doesn't need you to recopy the whole thing in your handwriting. You need to focus on your analysis. So let's take a look. And this is what I said about reading prompts too quickly. How it represents the characteristics of romance whatever those are, and the historical context of 15th century Spain, and los recursos literarios del romance, and ejemplos. So if we were to make a very fair rubric of this prompt, we would look at 
the characteristics of romance, historical context, the, the um, specific features of romance that help develop it as a, as a genre. And I would want to see in a final essay, ejemplos. I also want to see un ensayo bien desarrollado, a really well-developed essay. Development is one of these code words that standardized tests always use for length. Um, it does matter that you have more than um, a, a few sentences, right? This is a proper essay. And let's just actually take a look to prove my point. I'm going to take you to question three, 2016, the sample responses. They've all been basically in descending order of length. And we'll see the top ones. So this is four pages, some scribbles, nice and neatly done, a little bit of spacing, but it goes on to four pages. The next example is one page. And the next example is one page. So look at all the samples on the College Board's website. There is an implicit message here about your capacity to develop everything. So let's, um, if we're familiar with this work, because we don't have a ton of time, if we're familiar with this work, um, that, you know, we see these themes, see how they set you up here, how, how well this is? Paseabase el rey morro por la ciudad de Granada. Desde la Puerta de Elvira hasta la de Vivarambla. Ay de mí, Alama. Cartas le fueron venidas, que Alama era ganada. Las cartas echó en el fuego y al mensajero matara. Ay de mí, Alama. So this right here, El Rey Moro por la Ciudad de Granada. If you have any historical context, de este, um, El Reino de Granada en el siglo XIX, uh, quinte, y ustedes saben que um, hasta los, el año 1992 um, eh, los nazaríes en Granada tenían una, un reino muy fuerte en Fernán y Isabela del Castilla y León y Aragón han vencido, han um, tomado la ciudad in 1492. So if you know a little bit of that context, so you know about um, los muros in España, ahí hablo moro viejo. They're giving you a lot of what you need to, to do well. So don't feel like you're going in playing defense against an unfairly structured exam. Like this is definitely something that you can do. Let's take a look at what this response is and then we'll glance at the last question. Okay, uh, where was I? I'm here in three, sorry, I'm bouncing around. Um, okay. The loss of a territory or war demonstrates the incapacity of the political leader to govern his, his or her people. Uh, it is for this that the work Romance of an off, anonymous author reflects characteristic aspects of the Middle Ages in the 15th century in where the Moors, provenientes del norte, who came from uh, the northern part of Africa, suffered a uh, defeat at the hands uh, that una sufrieron una derrota a manos del último rey moro llamado Bao, Bao, Boabdil ante los reyes católicos, Isabel de Castilla, Fernando de Aragón, right there. Um, if Isabel de Fernando is giving that historical context, so boom, you're already getting historical context points. And this goes on for pages, the student checking each of those boxes. So we said that you needed to talk about the characteristics of romance. That student's going to do it. You needed to talk about el contexto histórico. Think of it like a checklist, that you need to talk about the literary features of romance and that you needed specific examples. And I know one by one, I'm going to see exactly this. I see this person citing line references. They don't need to do these little footnotes. That's like overkill. You could just put the line numbers in brackets or not use them at all. Um, if it makes you feel better, just put the numbers. That, that keeps just things kind of organized. So that is how the student handled question three. Focus on, on really, here's my a key piece of advice. Do not make the common mistake of getting bogged down in the text. There's a little kind of perfect middle zone, right? Where you could spend too much time at the beginning reading and not earning any points by writing anything. Or you could spend too little time at the beginning where you're kind of blasting through things too quickly. Find that sweet spot in the middle and ustedes pueden practicar por el internet con este website gratis que se llama AP Central, que en todos los años tenemos 
en menos 2020, el año muy extraño. But you can look at the free response questions, the scoring guidelines, the chief reader report, the scoring statistics, sample responses, and scoring distributions. You have everything you need to understand kind of what went down and practice little bits and pieces. So I'm going to go to the last one here, which is text four. Question four, which is the text comparison. Analyze the effect of literary devices or resources that the authors employ in the two fragments, narrative fragments, to develop the theme of the duality of being or of self. In your essay, compare the presentation of the theme and the two narrative fragments. You should include examples from the text that support your ideas. So here, I know that this is Don Quixote de Mancha de Cervantes, en el segundo, que es Miguel de Unamuno de Niebla. Um, so you get the two works. Um, notice that there's a lot of little periods of ellipses here, which is a little bit frustrating. They're kind of cu curating something, but it's also nice because they're not giving you a huge passage you can't possibly read. So I hope that this drive-by tour, and this you're going to write following the same instructions, shows you a few important things about even Spanish literature. This test is manageable. You can study specific things that will help you, and you can focus on a couple of different required texts, lists, text lists, and required vocabulary that can help you out. So I hope that this survey of the 2016 FRQs is showing you that you can do this, that you don't need to be thinking of like, my Spanish isn't good enough, or like, I always forget all my accents or whatever. Um, and don't let those, those things get in your way. Um, so there's a good question here, Carlin, I wanna address this. Um, and keep posting your questions in the chat. And I want to come back to this because you say, what poem types and characteristics should you know specifics of? Redondilla, Silva. So let's take a look. They give us, this is, this doesn't have to be like, oh, some secret thing I know that you don't know is right here in page, I'm scrolling down, in here. I know that here are the terms that you should know. If you want to memorize terms for poesia, here are some. Poema y poeta, voz poética, verso, estrofa, ritmo, métrica, rima, consonante, rima, asonante. So with the exception of the last couple, pretty straightforward words. Then it gets to, you should know, etasílabo, octasílabo, endecasílabo, alejandrino, arte menor, arte mayor, encal, encabalgamiento, estribillo, uh, Lírica, poema épico, redondilla, romance, sinalefa, soneto, verso agudo, verso estru, estrujulo, verso llano. Um, yes, and in fact, I'll put this, the AP Central, I'm going to pop these in the chat for you real quick. So this is the AP Central past questions. I want you all to go here. If you have not spent time here, if your teacher has not drawn you here, if you're worried about your access to AP Central or AP Classroom, which is what your teacher controls, this is the place to go. If you're looking for the course and exam description where I am right now, let me clean up my desktop a little bit here. Get rid of these guys. Okay, this, uh, no, that's not it. I wanna go here. Aquí estoy en la página 23 on this PDF. Okay, so one way to answer your question, Carla, is like, what do you need to know about these different types? These are, and here are the different types. So for example, technically, redondilla y silva aren't terms that at least appear here. They may appear elsewhere in the CED. Redondilla. Oh, no, they, they, they appear right here, right? Um, and let's try, you say silva, silva here. So I missed that. Silva y redondilla are text or words that you should know. Um, now, the recent question I got, I'm going to take both of these. Michelle, you asked, do we need to know specific wars or events? No, this isn't a history class and you don't need those things. When you do know them, when you do know that the Generación de 98 was the year of the Cuban, of the Spanish-American War in which the United States crushed Spain and took away, it's the final vestiges of the Spanish empire, Cuba, Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Philippines. Knowing that that happened and that there was devastation sets the context for what we know of the Generación of 98. So that can be an important kind of turning point. So focus on the turning points that are here. In fact, let's just see um, So what they say about the Generation 98. And I think we were just looking at this a minute ago. You'll know that it doesn't, it's not going to include um, the necessarily those those events and things. So I would consider them not part of the requirement. Now, regarding the multiple choice, that's another whole session. 
Um, and in fact, I want to say in previous ones on this very YouTube channel that you're on, we actually covered some of these in the past. So definitely check out these. But one quick place to go is this course and exam description. If you go to sample exam questions, here we can see, right? So you are going to, for here, for example, listen to La Guitarra de Federico García Lorca. Um, then you're going to have those questions. Here you're going to have this passage um, with Fabio Itisbeya, reasonably short. And then because the lines are so short, by the way, they kind of fly along. And then multiple choice questions that you should be familiar with. Notice that some of them do involve these literary terms more than the AP English literature exam. If any of you are in AP English Lit, remember that that exam has moved away from like showing off fancy vocabulary terms, but this one has not. So that's something I wanna encourage you with as we go live at Marco Learning and all these other subjects, pay attention to the nuances of the subjects that you have. Um, so we don't have time to cover that today, but I hope that this gives you at least a starting point. There are answers available for this. Well, with that, everyone, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up our session. I wanna thank you and I wanna encourage you all, have a great time on your exams. As you're studying, reach out to us at Marco Learning. We're here for you on YouTube. You, if you're watching the recording of this, you can post your questions in the comments. You can also post uh, questions on Instagram and TikTok and other places. We're always happy to speak to you all. So, que tengas buena suerte en este examen de AP Spanish Literature. I hope that it goes well. I hope you continue to study Spanish literature, not just 